Now I probably don't need to tell you that the 600 class is the most hotly contested class in biking that there is and this is Kawasaki's latest contender, a green meanie or more like a ninja warrior. It's a ZX6R and things have changed a lot. So what's changed? For a start off, completely new frame. They've increased the depth, they've increased the width of the frame there but kept the weight down. The engine is new, 106 brake horsepower. It's probably true to say it's a development but that's a hell of a lot of power from a 600. It's got magnesium cases. Not everywhere, I don't think. These are painted nice magnesium colours to give you that impression, but magnesium side cases have saved a lot of weight. Up the front, it's got the forks off the ZX9, 46 mm stanchions. Those are really hefty, no flexing off this. It's got the same brakes off the ZX9. In fact, you could start to think that it is a ZX9, but they're six pots and they're going to stop you on nothing. A sixpence, I should have said. Now, the clocks are new as well. Down here you've got a small speedometer and the large rev counter and they've got digital displays down at the bottom which give you the um, mileage, trip and also the time of day. Very useful. But one thing I must say, that speedo is incredibly small, it's calibrated up to 170 but anything over 70 starts to get blurred and so perhaps that's a sort of Kawasaki's way of making you preserve your licence. If you can't read the speedo over 70 you're going too fast. And of course what you can't miss, if you're the pilot on this, is Kawasaki's ram air ducts. They curve round here into the frame and eventually into the air box, which incidentally is more than an air box, it's more like a musical box because you get this lovely sing-song when you whack it open. And down below there you've now got a super duper curve radiator, real Grand Prix stuff or super bike stuff should I say. And not only that, behind that you've got stainless steel exhaust headers going right back to this gorgeous silencer. And look at the size of that, absolutely massive. While we're down here, you can see the rear shock in its gold anodized finish, and up there is a little piggyback reservoir. The uh, adjustments are on the other side there for uh, compression, but down there you can see the preload for the spring. Taking us up to the back wheel, you've got a box section swinging arm, pretty conventional, but the back wheel's in fact got a five and a half inch rim on it. At the moment, it's got a 170 tyre, but you can take it up to a 180 tyre if you're going racing. But this bike isn't all about racing, even though you feel like it is sometimes, it's still a bike for the road. Ninja it might say, but Howling Wolf it is. Responsible is that musical air box under the tank making the most wonderful noises. It's as if air is being drawn through some giant mouth organ. It's absolutely brilliant and can keep you entertained for hours, zipping up and down the six-speed box like some displaced tap dancer. Yes, no doubt about it, entertainment is this Quacker's Forte. 14,000 revs comes up in no time at all, making it hard to realise you're on a 600. But ease off a touch and you have a tractable 600 pulling away smoothly. Until that banshee whale starts at around 8 grand and you're off again, playing races. Producing an absolutely amazing 106 brake from the 599cc motor, this is the most potent road bike the 600 class has yet seen and will be the benchmark for the new Yamaha R6 to beat. But it's not all Looney Tune stuff. There is life below eight grand. It's just that above that is where the real fun starts. Chassis wise, it's a beaut. It's light at 176 kilo and it's chuckable, but not frisky. In fact, it's got suspension that's perfectly matched to whatever you want to do. It feels on the soft side at lower speed, but seems to firm up the faster you go, just the way it should be. It's a short, cobby bike, but doesn't feel too small, and there's plenty of room to move about on the big seat, which incidentally isn't as comfortable as it looks. Numb bump sets in at around 100 miles. But at least the fairing is surprisingly effective at keeping you out of the elements. Brakes are what we've come to expect, smooth, powerful and progressive. So what more can you say? Only that you get a two-year warranty and a guarantee of fun on this ball of fire, and all for around 7,500 on the road. Mean or green, it can be both, but the meaner's the better.